the internet from web to wire. This is a tutorial in two parts in which I will explain how the internet functions. My name is Gunnar Karlsson and I'm a professor at KTH Raleigh Institute of Technology in Stockholm, Sweden. In this first part I will explain how a web page is fetched across the network. In the second part I will explain how the network transports the data. I will start with the World Wide Web from the location where I am. This is a web page. It's actually the web page of our library, KTH Bibliothek. The location of the web page is indicated in this field up here in the top of the browsers. This is called a uniform resource locator or URL. And then it has a certain form as you see here. Let's go over these parts. We take the red part first, HTTPS. This is the method used by the browser to fetch the web page. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and S stands for Secured. Protocol is the name we use for communication programs that work on the two sides of a communication, on the sender and the receiver side. Then we have a separator in the URL and then there is the green part which is where the page is located. So we can see by reading from the right towards the left that it's in Sweden. This is indicated by the country code SC and it's located at KTH, my university, and on a computer called www. The blue part is the path on the computer to the folder where the web page is located. But in this, there is no file name given for the page that's fetched. It turns out that, that if you don't specify the name of the page, then it's assumed that the name would be index.html or index.htm. This is the name which is assumed when it's not given. Many times you will see a specified file name here. I will show you what's behind this web page, what is it actually consists of. You can do that in the browser by selecting view source. You see here it looks very different. It says here in the first line that this document type is in format HTML. This stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext is text with embedded links that you can click. A markup language is a language that specifies how the text provided should be interpreted by the, the browser that receives the web page. So for instance, here we can see that the title of the page is KTH Biblioteket. This is also displayed on top in the tab of the web page. Recognize that HTML is expressed in regular characters. And here it specifies that the character set used for the web page is UTF-8. UTF stands for Unicode Transformation Format and it's a standardized way of representing characters. I'll give an example. Unicode is a long list of characters, an ordered list. And the capital A is character 65 in this character set. So if a sender can send 65 as a code to the receiver, and the receiver knows that it's, this is a code within the character set UTF-8, then it can see that this should be represented as, as capital A towards the viewer. All computers and the internet work only with binary data. This 65 has to be represented in, in, in bits because we don't use decimal numbers in, in the internet. Binary digits have value 0, 1. So you see here that th this string of 65 is represented by 8 bits 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Where the leftmost one has numerical value 64 in decimal notation. And the rightmost, the least significant digit, has value 1. So you see that we have 64 plus 1, which is 65, which we wanted to represent. So now we've seen what a web page is and where it's located, at least located with respect to the World Wide Web. The next step is to see how my computer can find this web page somewhere on, across the internet. So my computer in this case is called a client. It works on my behalf in order to fetch a web page for me. It will fetch it from a server. So this communication type is often referred to as client-server communication. 
between the server and the client is the internet. And my computer, when I type in a URL, it will use the method HTTPS. It will go to the computer www.kth.sc. Then it will ask for a file located in, in the folder bibliothek and call index.html. So this command is called get. And the server will respond with this requested file. In order to understand better what goes on and what we need to do further than this function, I want to give you an analogy with a regular uh, visit to a library when you're away from the keyboard. So here the task would be to, to, uh, to get a book. The item is called computer networks, the location is KTH campus, and the service point here would be the main library, Huvud Biblioteket. It has an address, Oscars Backe 31. The path within the library would be the South Gallery, shelf 004.6, and there you would look for the book by Peterson, published 2012. And the address of KTH is at zip code 10044 stock in Stockholm. When we do it by HTTP instead, we have the command get. The item now that we should fetch is index.html. Location name we have, it's the computer where the file is resident. The service point through which we can get this file is HTTP, which is the program that, that uh, will provide the file. The path on that computer is, is Biblioteket. But we're missing something, where, the address. Where is the server? The client computer needs to find the server somewhere on the, in the world connected to the internet. It can be anywhere. So now the browser needs to do something before it can use HTTP in order to get the, uh, the file. It needs to find the address of, of the server. The client has an address already. In my case, uh, it's been assigned by uh, uh, automatically when the computer connects into the network. This is by a program called DHCP, it stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So it's dynamic, as it says, and it configures the host, meaning my computer. So it has given the computer an address, starting with 130, 237, 44, and 25. I will explain these addresses later on. It has also provided addresses to something called DNS servers. DNS is the domain name system. Th these uh, servers can be used to look up a domain name in order to find the corresponding IP address. So here there's a choice of four different servers that uh, my browser can connect. But also for completeness, I should say that my computer also has a physical identifier. This is an identifier that's provided to the network interface card on the computer by the manufacturer. This is sometimes referred to as a MAC address, and this is 48 bits long. So what's the next step? Well, I have my computer, it has an address. There's a DNS server for which it, my computer has, has the, the address. So it can now make a DNS re query asking for the IP address for www.kth.se. And then the server will respond with the address for that server, which is 130, 237, 2840. Now the browser has enough information to use HTTP to connect to the server and ask for, for the file index in the folder bibliothek. And the server will then provide it. So what happened in the client and the server requires support of other programs than the two we have seen this far. These pro communication programs, as I remarked, are usually referred to as protocols. So we have on the application side here, in the client, HTTP and DNS. DNS was used for asking to uh, get the IP address for the given uh, domain name. And HTTP was then used, or HTTPS was then used to uh, get the web page. HTTP relies on something called a transport protocol. These protocols are used in the computers to support many services across uh, the internet. There are two such protocols 
transmission control protocol and user data gain protocol. TCP provides a reliable service, meaning that all the data that is sent will be delivered to, to the receiver. UDP is unreliable and provides only the minimal service, meaning that it will give the data to the right application program. Below the transport protocol comes the network protocol. This is the internet protocol, which will be used to carry data across the internet globally. All connected computers have the same suite of programs, so also the server of course supports HTTP, TCP and IP. So when the client has received the IP address of the server, the HTTP can request to have a connection set up to the server. Since the browser uses HTTP, it would like to connect to HTTP also on the server side, so it indicates this. This is called a port address and number 80 corresponds to HTTP. TCP now has all the information that it needs. It has the port number and it has the address of the computer. So TCP can set up a connection to the receiving TCP and then send message over that connection via IP. The messages that come from TCP will be sent as packets in, uh, over the network. For each packet there is indication that it's destined for TCP and it has an address of the server and also the address of the sender. On the receiver side the packets are received. It's indicated that the packet, the data should go to TCP so it's forwarded to that protocol and TCP will in turn give the data to, to port 80 meaning that it receives HTTP. And then the two part and then HTTP on the two sides can communicate with one another where the client can send commands to the server and server can respond to those commands. What we've seen is the get command from the client which leads to a response from the server with the web page that the client asked for. So let's now look at the packets. The IP, the Internet Protocol packet, is a wrapper similar to an envelope for, for postal mail containing the address information from the sender to the destination. The internet packet is similar. It also has a sender and it has a receiver. So if we go over from Paravion to pa Internet Protocol, we will see that we go from an address given as an IP address to a destination also given by an IP address with the attention that the receiver should forward the, the contents of the packet to, to TCP in this case. The internet packet is a string of bits. The first part of the packet is called a header. Th this corresponds to the envelope of the, of the postal mail. The format is specified by the internet protocol and all computers and all nodes in the network will recognize the packet and know exactly what the information goes where. You see here that the packet contains two addresses, the destination address and the sender address then it contains control information which we're not interested in in this tutorial. But among the other information there is an indication that the contents of the packet should be forwarded to TCP. And then to the left of this is the data of the packet which is a, a can be a long part, it can be up to uh, 65,000 bytes where a byte is 8 bits. And it's here that you would find the characters of the HTML web page. So in summary Web pages are made in hypertext format with normal characters. These characters are encoded and can be represented in bits. And these are the bits that are being shipped across the internet for a web page. The World Wide Web is based on a client browser that gets pages from a web server. The server is found by the resource locator and its address is given by a domain name lookup. The URL specifies which method should be used to fetch the, the web page. HTTP and HTTPS needs TCP to connect the client and the server together. When the TCP connection has been established, HTTP can send commands to the server and all commands and the web pages are sent as data. The data are carried in IP packets between addre the addressed computers. In the following part, 
we look how the network operates and how it, it ensures that data gets into the right location and how data is, is transported over wires in the network.